is this is a homage beat. Oh, it's that time again. It's 2K Kingslayer, aka 2KK, back again here in the 2K film room where we break down various NBA 2K gameplay. Today we're going to be taking a look at the two-man action freelance, along with some OKC Thunder money plays that we're going to be pairing with that freelance. And let's take a look real quick at today's agenda before we get into it. So today we're going to be starting in the 2KU scrimmage mode, so you can see how these plays look. Then we're going to jump into an online game to show you guys that this scheme does work against human beings. And then finally, we're going to jump into the post game show where I give my final thoughts on this scheme, uh, as well as just chat with you guys for a few minutes. So without further ado, let's jump into the 2KU scrimmage mode here. So real quick before we get into it, a reminder to call a freelance. You're going to tap right on the D-pad, then you're going to tap L1 to select freelance sets, and you're going to scroll with L2 and R2. In this case, you're going to select the two man action freelance. All right, so let's jump right into it. So with the two-man action freelance, you're gonna see there's two players on the strong side of the court and everybody else is kind of just hanging around on the weak side. And our first option, as you just saw, is a pick and fade. And you're always, always, always going to go baseline uh, with the spacing because as you can see, everyone is overloading the weak side of the floor. So when your man pops, a lot of times, the defense is going to collapse and is going to get a nice open three like right there. Your second option is going to be the give and go to the man that's in the high post. And this can be accomplished in several ways. Uh, one of them is going to be uh, by holding the X button. After you pass, you'll be able to control the passer and then you can just cut yourself. And there are a couple other ways to do it. You can hold triangle and point to the passer if you want to have him cut, but it's up to you. That's really your preference. But that's the second option in the two-man action freelance. And then the third option is gonna be post-up position. Now what I like to do, because I'm using the thunder here, is hand the ball off by holding circle and then switching positions. So now you're gonna see Westbrook, who is your point guard, is actually gonna be the one that's posting up. Westbrook, as far as point guards go, is actually a pretty effective uh, post-up guy because he's really strong. His post moves are pretty decent. So that's partially why I'm using this two-man action freelance with the Thunder. So as you can see, Russ inside, little spin move baseline, nobody there to help. And he lays that one in. Green light on the layup, nice to see. And our first money play that we're going to throw into this scheme is called Fist Four Slip Wide. So again, this is in the Thunder playbook. I'm sure it's in other playbooks as well. But you can see we get a nice slip and fade right there. So Paul George comes up, pretends like he's gonna screen and roll, but he doesn't actually, he just gives a little brush screen, fades right away, and knocks down the three. That is called the slip for anyone who doesn't know. Second option here is after that slip occurs, and it worked the first time, your defenders are gonna be paying too much attention to Paul George, and you're gonna get the nice one inside. Now the third option is simple, if neither the, the slip nor the drive is available, Paul George is actually going to come back and set a real screen for you. So let's check this out again. Here's the slip, right? Doesn't work. Nothing available there on either side. So Paul George comes back and he sets a actual pick and fade. Okay, and now let's go to our second money play that we're going to throw into the scheme. This is called Fist STS Spain. As we've talked about, uh, in 2K18 videos, STS means screen the screener, which you'll see in just a second on this first option. So Steven Adams sets the screen for Paul George, who then comes over and sets the screen for Russell Westbrook, opening up the lane. Westbrook gets inside and the finish. A lot of times it's much easier than what you saw right there, but again, we're talking about practice. This is practice. Another option, you come around, Steven Adams comes down off of that on-ball screen. You can see right here, Steven Adams is going to drop and puts in the easy one. And then finally, what you can do is just reject the screen. So this time we're just going to go away from the screen and a lot of times we get this nice easy alley-oop to Steven Adams. Alright, so I think you guys get the idea. So now we're going to jump into an online gameplay demonstration to show you all that this does work against human beings. Real quick, 
Just to show you, I am switching Paul George and Jerry and Grant. So I'm putting Paul George at power forward in order to make this work. Okay, so make sure you guys do this if you're going to try that with the Thunder. So let's jump right into it here. So right off the bat, we're going to set up our two-man action freelance and walk it up the court. You're going to see Paul George setting up there in the post. And we're going to have Westbrook cut to the basket. Remember, I told you there are multiple ways to do that. Easier way to do it is by holding triangle and pointing, but I just wanted to show you guys there are multiple uh, options for getting our guy to cut to the basket. This time down, we're still in that two-man action, passing around a little bit, and we get an easy one in there. Not the textbook way to run the two-man action, but mixing it up a bit, so far so good. We're two for two, and we actually had Paul George on the cut there. We missed it. So again, I've mentioned before, we make mistakes sometimes. So what we're gonna do, hand the ball off by holding circle, and we're going to get Russell Westbrook in the post. And he's rocking the baby to sleep right there. Y'all seen him do that if you watch the NBA. So he takes advantage in the post. Going to move the ball around here with our money play. Paul George inside and one. Three the hard way for Paul George. Here's a replay. Inside. Up the foul. And it's good. Made possible by that fist force slip wide money play. Now we're going to go to the other money play, fist STS Spain. We're going to reject the screens and we get inside with Russell Westbrook. So one more time, Malcolm Brogdon was there, couldn't do a thing about it. And we finish with Russ. That's baby food. One more time. This time, same play again, but it's Dennis Schroeder. We get inside, find the penetration to Nerland's Noel who gets fouled. So we switch to broadcast camera here just to mix it up a bit. Back in the two-man action freelance. Gonna pass the ball around. And look at this, Dennis Schroeder. Four, three, but a bing. Schroeder from outside out of that two-man action. Okay, so we're gonna go with the baseline side pick and fade. We find Paul George again, but a bing. That time it's PG-13 from outside. We are down by three, and we find Paul George for the easy one inside. They double-teamed Russ there. Very nice. So you guys can see, very simple basketball. We're going to take it again with Paul George inside. Knocks it down again, and they got to call a timeout. We have cut the lead to one. 124 remaining in the third now. We go to Fist STS Spain. Two picks coming along here. There's the first pick. We make it look like we're going to reject it, step back, and Dennis Schroeder with another three-pointer to tie the game. So you can see here on the replay, they thought we were going to reject the screen. We step back, and nobody stepped up because those STS plays really confuse the defense. Okay, back to 2K view now. Again, baseline side pick and fade. Oh my goodness, Russell Westbrook throws it down inside and we take the two-point lead over the Milwaukee Bucks so we're gonna hand it off from that two-man action again so we can get Russ in the post the foul up and in Russell Westbrook has been ferocious in this game so now here we go with that pick and slip option we get the double screens inside and Ferguson Throws it down off the assist. 105 remaining in the game. We've already got a seven point lead. Make it nine. And that is pretty much the dagger. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Budenhoser looking very confused. And we walk away with the eight point victory. And as you're gonna see with the box score in just a second, two man action led to two men going off in particular. Giannis is like, what just happened? I'm supposed to be unbeatable in this game, and he is, but there we go. Westbrook and PG with 18 apiece. Now, as you can see, Dennis Schroeder uh, chipping in a little bit off the bench, but two-man action, you're going to have your two primary guys scoring. That's just how the freelance works. So uh, taking a look here, we actually lost bench points, which we rarely lose, but we won assists and time of possession. Okay, two important stats, 52% field goal percentage. And we didn't shoot well from three, but yeah. So now into the post-game show. Uh, just to give my final thoughts on two-man action. So as the 
title of the freelance kind of suggests. Um, this, okay, so this freelance, it worked out here, uh, but this would definitely not be a go-to freelance for me unless you have very specific types of teams. So the reason I'm using this with the OKC Thunder here is because the Thunder do not have a lot of great offensive players. So really what you kind of want to do when you're using this team is send, you know, Steven Adams, Tony Ferguson, and whoever else is on the floor at the time, you know, Robertson when he comes back, none of those guys can really shoot well. So you're kind of sending them away and letting PG-13 and Westbrook go to work. And that'll work with, you know, you can kind of use this with the Kobe Shaq Lakers and stuff like that, but um, not a lot of ball movement can be effective, but definitely not one of my favorite freelances. Uh, having said that, really worked out here, and you're going to get big stat lines for those two players in particular. The usage rate with your two biggest players are going to be really high. But yeah, really simple freelance. Do I recommend it for everybody? Definitely not. Would I recommend it for most teams? No, because most teams have more than two players on the floor at a given time that can, uh, that can contribute offensively. Uh, but yeah, I did have fun with this one. Had some pretty good games. Um, now, as always, as part of the post-game show, I am going to just chat with you guys a little bit. And today, I actually just wanted to ask you guys a simple question. So, typically, I'm a big-time 2K guy. 2K is pretty much the only game that I spend a lot of time on. Uh, just because I'm an adult, I'm married, my time is limited. But, when I've been hanging out with my buddies recently, we've been playing another game that came out within the past month or so. You guys might know what I'm talking about if you follow me on Twitter. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Super fun game, having a great time playing with my buddies, and I just wanted to kind of gauge from you guys, would you be interested in watching any Smash Brothers content? I know this is a purely 2K branded channel, so it might even be on a different channel, but just let me leave a comment below. I just want to get an idea of how interested you guys would be in seeing some Smash Brothers content. I am not great. My skill level in Smash Brothers and my knowledge of Smash Brothers is nowhere near what it is for 2K. So I'm letting y'all know that right off the bat. But if you would like some content Smash related or Smush related, as some say, like I said, leave me a comment. Let me know. Um, as far as 2K, I'm of course still going to be, you know, uploading the same 2K content here. Got a couple more tutorials coming up for freelances. But yeah, leave me a comment below. I do try to read and respond to all comments. And until next time, Happy gaming, y'all.